Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to create a sprint burndown chart in Excel. It's going to be a lot of fun and it's a dynamic chart and it's a chart that you can take anywhere on your career or on your journey. Let's get started. First of all, this is what it's going to look like. So we've got our a nice sprint down chart, our ideal trend, which is what we're looking at, and uh, the actual work that we're completing as we're going along, which doesn't match the ideal trend, you know, that's what happens in the real world. And we can, we can, we've got our user stories, our backlog items, and then all of the different pieces of work and the estimates of work that we've got there that make up our sprint burn down chart. First of all, let's just set up our canvas. And so we, we want from B to around about N, which will give us 10 days in our sprint backlog. And first of all, we're going to take from B to N and merge and center those, make it a little bit, a little bit larger. And this is just going to give us our heading. So we'll say this is our sprint burn down chart. And we'll center that up the top here and make it a little bit bigger. And now we know what we're working with. Let's give ourselves a second heading here uh, where we can put a little bit of information and that will come later. So we start with our backlog ID and then of course we go to our, uh, our users or user stories. That's our descriptions there. And we might make that just a little bit bigger and center that as well. And same with our backlog ID. Then we have our initial estimate. And what we're going to do now is give ourselves the days. So we, we want 10 days in our sprint, so five days in a week and uh, two weeks for our sprint. And you can have more or less, that's completely up to you. But we're going to start with day zero here and then go to day one. Now let's see if Excel will pick up the rest of these for us. Yes, that's what we want. And uh, all the way up to day 10, if we just drag that, let's center it, make it nice and centered. And uh, now it's starting to, to take shape for our initial, uh, initial matrix. Now we can give these dates as well. So we might say uh, maybe it's August 10. And if we pull this across, oh, that'll turn it into September. So we need to give it two to work with. Let's make it August the 11th. And there we go. So we'll give it five days and then uh, two days for the weekend. So. 14th, 15th, 16th, that'll start us on the 17th again. And we'll give it one more and then pull the rest of those across. And those will be our dates for the, for the sprint that we're going to be working with. Now what we're going to do is just set up our, set up our matrix with the borders. So if we just give that, uh, give that borders using our border uh, tool here, then that starts to look much more like a matrix. And now we can take the bottom two and merge those together and say this is our remaining effort. And the one underneath, we can say this is our ideal trend. And if we just give those, all of these ones, uh, a nice border as well, and we can tidy up those borders. In fact, let's give it, uh, let's give it a thick border around that and a thick border around here. And that way we know uh, we've got some clear boundaries there for our matrix. Now we're going to fill out some examples. So let's say our backlog ID is, uh, is 123, then 124, then 125, 126. Those can be our initial backlog uh, IDs and user stories might be feature one, feature two, and so on. Now we're just going to merge these two together as well. So just use that merge and center button and backlog ID, merge and center, and now we're really starting to take shape here. So what we're wanting to do for our initial estimate is, uh, is give ourselves uh, what, what do we think this card will take? So will it take two days to complete? And maybe this one will take three days. Maybe this one will take four days. Maybe this one will take five days. So that's our initial estimate. And of course, let's just, uh, let's just center these nicely so that they do look good when we're, when we're coming up. And we'll do the same for our totals at the bottom. Now what we're wanting to do is give ourselves the remaining effort. So we just want to do a total of our initial estimate here. And to do that we say equals sum and we just take all of these boxes and close that off. So we've got 20, approximately 20 days or 20, you know, let's say call it 20 days worth of effort for that particular one. And we want the same 
uh, for our ideal trend because we're going to start there as well. So we just say sum, open the bracket, and then of course choose all of those cells and close that bracket off. Now here is where things, uh, things will change. So for our remaining effort, first of all we'll have to put in the, the detail of what will actually happen over our sprint. So let's say for our first feature we do one day's worth of effort here and one day's worth of effort there. Uh, and for feature two we do two days here, one day there. Let's say for feature three we do one, one, and one and one, and so on and so on. Now if we want to add effort during the iteration, we can just do a minus. So let's say we, we've added two days worth of effort. So there's an extra something that comes up for feature three. And we, we just want to make that a minus two. So we're adding two there. And then we're gonna have to do two extra days worth of effort a uh, little bit down the road. And you'll see why this is important in a second. Because what we're going to be doing is, uh, is doing the total of all of these columns. And it's the same as what we did for our first total, just the sum function. But what we also want to do is minus it from our total. So if we start with this particular cell, so the, the remaining effort cell, and then if we minus all of those, or the sum of all of our effort for that particular day. So let's try that. And the first one is 20 because we haven't done any effort, which is, which is uh, going to be interesting. And then if we drag this across, hopefully it will match up. Great, that's fantastic. So it, it takes, as you can see, it takes each cell and it moves it across just one every time. If we, if we go over here, it'll do the same. So it's taking the previous day and then minusing, uh, taking away all of that effort that we've done for that particular day. Or adding that effort if we've had to add some effort like we had for, for this particular one here. So that's our remaining effort. And as you can see, it goes all the way from 20 down to zero, which is what we're wanting it to do. But now we want our ideal trend as well. And to do our ideal trend, we want to take that 20 and essentially divide it into 10 parts. So there's 10 days in our sprint and uh, we want each, each day to take off a portion of that 20. So at one tenth or 10% of those 20 days. So let's figure out how to do that. So we're wanting to take our, our total duration, which is this cell here, and we'll make this a little bit prettier in a second as well. But we want to take that, and we, we don't want that to change. So we want to put a dollar sign in front of the D and a dollar sign in front of the 12. Now that means when we, when we drag or copy this across, that D12 is not going to change. So we're just going to minus D12 uh, divided by 10 multiplied by 1. So what that does is that gives us the 10% uh, of, of, of our days. So with that formula there, we can take that and hopefully, let's see if that carries across. Okay, so that doesn't carry across unfortunately. But if we do, just if we do carry across that all the way to the end, then all we need to do is change our 1 to 2 and then so on and so forth, the two to three, and the three to four, all the way up to 10, so that eventually uh, we're taking away 100% of the 20 days. So let's just give ourselves a little bit of color here and just tidy this up. So we can give this a nice, a nice blue and maybe, the, maybe a nice white uh, in the, uh, for, the, for the lettering there. And let's just color these particular areas. Maybe we'll make this a nice yellow, uh, and right up the top, maybe we can, uh, we can make all of this a nice yellow as well. And if we make that bold, maybe it'll stand out just a little bit more, and this is starting to look a little bit more like our, our features. If we've got maybe, uh, maybe a, the remaining effort, we'll color that just a little pale, pale yellow, and the ideal trend, maybe we'll, we'll color that a bit of a pale green. And we're starting to see for our est initial estimate, let's put that as a bit of a, a light blue. And now it's starting to take shape. We can clearly see that, uh, that we're re removing uh, effort you know, as we're going along. And we can actually use this to create our chart. So this is the best part. And this is of course the part that you've most likely been waiting for. But uh, we needed to do all of this in order to create the chart that we were looking at. And to do that, we're just going to select the numbers here. So the remaining effort and the ideal trend 
uh, and those two columns. And we're just going to start by inserting a line graph. So now we've got from 1 to 11, but we still need to fi fill out the, the actual details of what these are representing. So, you know, it looks okay, but we what we want is for that to, to say our remaining effort ideal trend and for the days to be correct as well. So we're just going to right click on this and select our data. Now the first thing we're going to do is edit our horizontal category and give that from day 0 to day 10. Okay, now that's looking a little bit better. As you can see, we've got from day zero to day 10 now, and but we still need to name our series a bit more correctly. So let's delve back into our data and right click and select data. And we just click on our series one and we edit that. The series one name will click on remaining effort. And that's what we want. Series two, if we edit that and click on ideal trend, that will fill that out for us. And so if we click OK, now we can see that we've got a chart that has our ideal trend in, in orange. And we can actually change, of course, the, the colors of all of these. If we just right click and say format uh, that, those chart options. Now it's starting to really take shape. And you've created, uh, you've created a burn down chart from scratch. As you can see, we've got our features, our bugs, the initial estimates and then the estimates uh, or the amount of work that we've actually completed over that time. And then we've created that into a burndown chart where it shows us what our ideal trend should be and what our actual trend actually, you know, actually ends up being. And that is the burndown chart in Excel. I've really enjoyed creating this with you and I hope you've enjoyed it too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.